distancing of President Trump's friend and political advisor, Roger Stone. The president said today that Stone has a, quote, very good chance of exoneration. That comment just hours after Stone was sentenced to 40 months in prison for lying to Congress and witness tampering. This follows a week of back and forth between the president and his attorney general, William Barr, over the president's tweets about the case. And some are wondering whether the president's words and comments may have had some influence on Stone's sentencing, which turned out to be less than prosecutors' original recommendation. What is clear is that the president plans to continue arguing on behalf of his old friend. And it's my strong opinion that... The forewoman of the jury, the woman who was in charge of the jury, is totally tainted. When you take a look, how can you have a person like this? She was a anti-Trump activist. Can you imagine this? Hmm. Joining me now here in New York is Amir Benno, a constitutional law attorney and former Republican congressional candidate. And also with me in Los Angeles, Jamie Wright an attorney and political analyst. Both uh, welcome to you to stateside. Uh, Jamie, let me start with you. Let's talk about Stone sentencing. 40 months in prison, is that a fair punishment for obstructing Congress uh, in the Russia investigation? Well, I think in terms of the sentencing, we have to look at what happened, which was the original guidelines from the prosecutors suggested seven to nine years. Then suddenly, uh, Attorney General Barr issued a memo that said three to four. So we're seeing a, a, a Justice Department that is very divided. I think it is clear, though, that the federal judge thought that her sentencing was fair based on her comments. She said, uh, quote, that this particular instance, he lacked basically moral, I'm not going to quote her, but that he lacked morality, that he lacked integrity, and that he was insecure. Um, I think it's yet to be seen, though, whether or not uh, he will, in fact, be exonerated and if, in fact, the sentencing is going to be seen as unfair on appeal. I I think right. it will be considered to be fair. How about it, Amir? I mean, should Stone have gotten more time as prosecutors originally wanted? No, and I'd just like to make a quick correction, which is there are federal sentencing guidelines, and essentially what happens is they look at certain facts in the case. They say you're of a certain age bracket, your crimes of conviction are of a particular category, and you get certain numbers uh, that attach. You get one point for this category, five points for that. They call them enhancements, and this is providing the judge with with essentially what's a, a discretionary guideline on where the sentencing should be. And so the original prosecutors who had the case, they were very hyper-technical about particular guidelines. And they said, well, Roger Stone could, uh, the facts of this case, could, you know, fit into this guideline. So therefore, you should give him, say, eight extra points. And the higher the number is, the higher the range in sentencing will be. And what happened was, ultimately, you get this recommended sentence of nine to ten years in that proximity for what amounts to essentially uh, lying under oath about but, nothing is significant. Sure. And, but, and so ultimately, what happened is, is they they... They pursue what prosecutors are supposed to pursue in DOJ, and that is not to get a conviction at any cost, not to go after somebody for political purposes, but to do justice. And but I Amir, think that's where they land. Something happened here in terms of the prosecutors because a number of them resigned, right? <laughs> exactly. Right, Jamie? But, exactly. But that's, yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, well, ahead, we can Jamie. agree to disagree on that. The fact of the matter is, is that there was a dispute within the, the DOJ. That was what we saw play out live in real time. And whether or not it was politically motivated or whether it was just, wow, we've now reconsidered based on, I don't know, some epiphany we had at night, the original offer was seven to nine, and then it dropped from three to four. Now, well, we can so, speculate on how it happened, but we all saw it happen. Well, well, it seemed to time with the president's comments on Twitter, at least, uh, about Roger Stone, saying that his, his punishment may, may be unfair. Uh, do you think that had anything to do with it, Amir? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, nobody's from either side is, is arguing uh, that the judge abandoned her discretion or that somehow she was influenced. I think she's shown time and again. I mean, she's presided over every single one of these cases uh, that had to do with, with the Mueller investigation, with Manafort, with Gates, and so uh, on and on. And so, you know, she, I think, ultimately decided that the revised recommendation was a more appropriate sentence. And nobody right. is saying that the, he shouldn't be sentenced. 
but it just shouldn't be a decade. So, Jamie, let, let's you, you alluded to this in terms of uh, whether Trump will pardon Stone. Do you think the president is playing coy about his decision over Stone? I mean, he just granted clemency to former Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich, who he barely knew, and Stone is actually his friend. So it seems likely uh, some sort of pardon will come. I think as far as what he's doing is he doesn't want to at least at this point perceive, perceive, be perceived as someone who is going to skirt around what a federal judge has done. Um, I think he is definitely going to pardon his friend. Um, mm. I know he's saying he's waiting to see how it plays out, but I think absolutely that he's going to exercise his discretion to do so. And so, uh, Amir, where does William Barr come into all this? I mean, he had to have signed off on this 40-month prison sentence for, uh, for Stone uh, before it actually went to the judge, and that's the lesser sentence that we've been talking about that prosecutors had originally recommended. Well, I don't know that the attorney general, maybe in this sort of a case with such a high profile, the attorney general himself would involve himself. It's more, I think, compartmentalized to the criminal uh, division of DOJ. So I don't necessarily know that, mm -hmm. that Barr did have a role. Obviously, that's what people are speculating. But I'd just like to go back and say with Blagojevich, just we should note that he was a Democrat. And so what Donald Trump is saying is, look, I think here's a person in Blagojevich who was sent to 13 years in prison for something, and that was excessive. And so should he turn around and ultimately pardon Roger Stone, uh, I think that there's a, a, a strong argument to be made that he's being balanced. Jamie, how about it? I mean, Trump did uh, kind of uh, play with, uh, with Blagojevich on his Celebrity Apprentice show, so there was a connection there, but a limited one, right? Yeah, there was a limited one. This is his, I mean, to, to put it lightly and proverbially, a spoon coon. This was somebody who was heavily involved in his campaign and, and for that matter, heavily involved in other Republican campaigns. And based on the sort of smug smirk that he had when he came out of the courthouse, I think that Trump is going to do what Trump usually does, which is exercise his ability as the president to basically say, you know what, some of these white collar crying... We're out of here. You know what? Mm. You get you get your freedom, your walking papers. So underneath all this, Jamie, should the president just stop tweeting and commenting about DOJ cases like Barr has asked? I mean, Trump says he has the right, uh, but there seems to be some sort of influence going on. I mean, obviously, he's the president of the United States. Yeah, he should exercise some more discretion. That's just the fact of the matter. He does not have to, you know, what my mother used to say, everything that comes up, come out. It's not necessary to do so. Yeah. Uh, Amir? What do you think? I think I'd agree with Jamie on that one. <laughs> All right. Well, there we go. Trump, right. Trump gets to stop <laughs> tweeting. At least there isn't a point of agreement here between the two of our guests. A, a constitutional law attorney Amir Benno and attorney Jamie Wright. Thanks to you both for joining Thank me you. here. Next on Stateside, case of domestic terrorism.